into it. So once again, I'm starting with the name Femi Otedola, not just as a reference to him being a former major player in the oil and gas sector, as we discussed yesterday, but now it's directly about him in his new role as a power generating supremo. If you don't know, uh, you, uh, because maybe you don't live in Nigeria or you're not generally interested in the power sector, Femi Otedola, the erstwhile chairman of Xenon Oil, which remanifested as Fort Oil, has ditched the petrol pump for the electricity meter. He has entered into the power game with the electricity distribution company, Geregu Power, and Geregu has been making major moves with respect to attracting local and forward investment, as well as infrastructure expansion. But this is not about how well or not Geregu is doing, but about Femi Otedola's recent statements, which are very pertinent, since he's an insider and should know what he's saying. Now, he recently spoke during the closing gong ceremony hosted by the Nigerian Exchange Limited in Lagos, and he had some good shade to throw around. So let's look at the shade he's throwing. First, he said since he was born, and I'm not paraphrasing, since he was born, Nigeria has been stuck at 5,000 megawatts, but only Aliko Dangote, the founder of Dangote Cement and the world's richest black man, if you don't know, has managed to build 2,000 megawatts of power just for his cement plants, uh, which is basically just about 40% of Nigeria's total output. Now, is he just saying this? A quick fact check. He's not wrong. You see, despite the fact that Nigeria started electricity generation as far back as 1896, and the successive rebranding from NEPA to PHCN, and the privatization and unbundling, which happened about 10 years ago, look, despite all this, the total power generating capacity, that is total available capacity, if we use and maintain our equipment well, is just around 11,000 megawatts for over 200 million people. Now, put that into perspective. A country like South Africa generates well over 58 megawatts, 58,000 megawatts, I beg your pardon, with 95% access rates for a country of just under 60 million people. And they still have power problems. They're demonstrating because of some blackouts. Now, to make matters worse, we don't even have access to the 11,000 megawatts that we're talking about. Our power generation fluctuates between 4,000 and 5,000 megawatts. And the highest level recorded is about 5,801 uh, I think 0.6 megawatts, which was on March 1st, 2021. Now, he also went on to say that leadership is the problem and that it's disheartening that all the successive governments had failed to improve the deplorable electricity supply. And I agree with him. Countries have gone to the moon and private entities are trying to colonize Mars, but we cannot guarantee 24 hours of power to one building in the country for 365 days. Even Aso Rock, the presidential villa, has a generator and diesel budget that could make a positive impact on the education sector. So it's, it's so, so sad. Last year, the national grid collapsed six times in 10 months. And if we look at the total figures under the administration of President Muhammad Buhari and Good Luck Jonathan, Nigeria's power grid collapsed at least 220 times between 2010 and 2022. Now, Otodola then went on to note that the new plants built by the government eight to ten years ago, that's during the unbundling and changing to PHCN and having all the distribution companies, that these power plants are just sitting idly. And he suggested that, look, any government who thinks well will say, and let me quote him, let us look for a few entrepreneurs in this sector that have committed so much capital and time and let them sort out the problem. If the government doesn't understand, I think what he's saying is, I'm here, I have the money, I'm investing, give us these power plants, let's do something. And again, I agree with him. Now, the final shade came when he said he now feels the pain of poor power supply, as he had to install solar power in his power generating company to reduce costs. A power generating company needs backup power. And he made this quote. Of course, with Ford for Anzinon, I used to control the diesel market. Today, I'm crying. I have asked my team, my back office, to start installing solar power to save the cost of diesel. If power is well organized, it is even cheaper. And, and I agree with him. It's sad that a power generating company needs backup power. Now, Nigeria in December 2022 said they were adding about 11 hydro power projects to bring in another 3,750 megawatts. And I think that's appalling because it doesn't even still get anywhere. We're doing five, you add that, what's that, eight? And even if we have the whole 11, what's that, 14? Gary Goh has shown us that 
what we need to do. Get private equity to take the system top to bottom and give government some equity for owning it originally. Till we take the spirit of NEPA out of our power sector, we cannot say confidently that there will be light. Now, Mr. Femi Otodola may have missed out on the opportunity to become my father-in-law and you know, we all make mistakes. But on the issue of power, he has hit the mark, and I'll leave it at that.